The beaches look different to General Omar Bradley that June, as famously captured by a photographer for Life magazine. 25 years had passed since the G.I. Joe with three stars on his shoulder, as his men fondly referred to him as, had commanded an army of 1.3 million men across 43 different divisions. It was the largest American force in history to ever fall under a single field commander. Earlier in the Second World War, before Allied Supreme Commander Dwight D. Eisenhower assigned General Bradley to oversee Operation Overlord for the planned D-Day invasion of Normandy across the English Channel, where General George Patton had decoy bases built elsewhere in the UK to throw off the Germans on such a massive buildup, Bradley had been sent to North Africa and later to Italy for the Sicily campaign. He had, cut, he had cut his teeth in those theaters of the war, and now it was time for the big push through the heart of Europe, from occupied France all the way to Berlin. But in June of 1969, those were already starting to become faded and distant memories. And yet the scars of war are still are visible at Omaha Beach and elsewhere, where one can find scraps of metal and Nazi bunkers still dotting the landscape. General Bradley, who had achieved the highly esteemed rank of five-star before his retirement, famously told his men as he oversaw in England their training for the invasion across the Channel on June 6, 1944, I'll see you on the beaches. And that he did. Only two generals were on the beaches with their men that day, and that included Brigadier General Theodore Roosevelt Jr., the son of the 26th president, who led his men from the front at Utah Beach. As a 57-year-old veteran of the First World War, with the lifelong injuries to prove it, came in hand. General Bradley later said of this Medal of Honor recipient that his actions in the face of a hail of bullets and artillery fire was the bravest thing he had ever seen. General Roosevelt would die a little over a month later in his sleep from a heart attack. And so with sacrifices like that, we celebrate and honor the bravery of all those men, including my great-great-uncle, Joe Miklas, who fought in the Third Army under General George Patton in storming the beach of Utah on this 79th anniversary of D-Day. To mark this solemn occasion, here's General Dwight D. Eisenhower's famous D-Day speech. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brothers in arms on other fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940-41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home front have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. And at the same time, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt was leading the nation in prayer during one of his famous fireside chats. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My fellow Americans, last night when I spoke with you about the fall of Rome, I knew at that moment the troops of the United States and our allies were crossing the channel in another and greater operation. It has come to pass with success thus far. And so, in this poignant hour, I ask you to join with me in prayer. Almighty God, our sons, pride of our nation, this day have set upon a mighty endeavor, a struggle to preserve our republic, our religion, and our civilization. 
and to set free a suffering humanity. Lead them straight and cruel. Give strength to their arms, stoutness to their hearts, steadfastness in their faith. They will need thy blessings. Their road will be long and hard. For the enemy is strong. He may hurl back our forces. Success may not come with rushing speed, but we shall return again and again. And we know that by thy grace and by the righteousness of our cause, our sons will triumph. <laughs>